Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and it's Tuesday, August 16th. Tesla supercharger stations that are open to non-Tesla electric vehicles have been deemed illegal in Germany due to the lack of a kilowatt-hour counter on the units. Over the last year, we have been reporting on Tesla ramping up their effort to open the supercharger network to other electric vehicles outside of Tesla. Tesla has begun opening up stations across Europe, but now they've hit a bit of a speed bump. Translated from German, the publication Handelsblatt reports, quote, Every charging station at which charging current is billed, according to kilowatt hours, must comply with calibration law in Germany, i.e. have a meter that precisely measures the charged current. This applies to public space, but also to company and private premises. Now, Thomas Weberpals, head of the Bavarian State Office for Weights and Measures, said that Tesla's job is to retrofit the stations, saying, quote, The illegal operation is not hindered and not sanctioned. It was and is being worked towards a lawful state. Tesla has expanded its virtual power plant in California to southern parts of the state through a partnership with Southern California Edison. A virtual power plant consists of distributed energy storage systems, such as the Tesla Powerwall, and they're used in concert to provide grid services and avoid the use of polluting and expensive peaker power plants. This new version of the Tesla virtual power plant actually compensates Powerwall owners $2 per kilowatt hour that they contribute during emergency low reduction events. Now, most of California is covered by the virtual power plant from Tesla, as most Powerwall owners are able to enroll. Tesla is also running a virtual power plant demonstration in Texas as it expands the energy services. In a not too unsimilar news story, Ford and Duke Energy are planning to use the F-150 Lightning pickup truck battery as a backup energy storage system to conserve energy use on the grid. Duke Energy is actually one of the largest utility companies with over 7.4 million customers in the Carolinas, Florida, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. They're filing a petition for a new pilot program with the North Carolina Utilities Commission. Duke Energy plans to test the program with up to 100 customers to begin. The exchange will help stabilize the energy grid, putting at least one hole in the theory that EVs are bad for the electricity grid. The FBI has been spotted using an electric Ford Mustang Mach-E. Electric vehicles are quickly becoming popular with police departments, who are doing the math and finding out that with the amount of mileage they put on a patrol vehicle, they can't afford not to go electric. And now we see it with a vehicle wrapped up with the FBI logo and also the police department. We are likely going to start seeing a lot more Mustang Mach-E's as law enforcement vehicles, not only considering the electric part, but also for its existing relationship with police departments. Ford, General Motors, and BMW are announcing a new managed EV charging pilot program with SMUD, which is the sixth largest not-for-profit electric service provider. SMUD is working with the automakers to see if the new pilot program can help Sacramento-based EV users find the best time to charge their vehicles during the day. SMUD's current power supply is about 50% carbon-free, yet the energy provider plans to add 3,000 megawatts of renewable energy and storage. The automakers, Ford, GM, and BMW, will create custom charging requests as part of the agreement, providing an optimal charging schedule for EV owners to charge up at the ideal times. Polestar has announced their O2 concept car will become the Polestar 6. Consistent with what we learned at the concept event back in March, the Polestar 6 will sit upon the automaker's bonded aluminum platform and will be developed entirely in-house. The specs include 800-volt electric architecture, which is also confirmed for the Polestar 5, a dual-motor powertrain with 884 horsepower and 663 pound-feet of torque, targeted 0 to 62 mile-per-hour acceleration in 3.2 seconds, and a target top speed of 155 miles per hour. Coca-Cola Canada Bottling Limited, or Coke Canada, has announced that they are testing a new EV pilot program using the Ford e-Transit cargo van. The company plans to reduce the carbon footprint of each drink by 25%. So far, they have reduced the carbon footprint by 21% since the year 2010. With the help of Ford's e-Transit, Coke Canada looks to make good on their commitments. Something very interesting is that the program actually includes installing EV chargers at work and also at employees' homes. In today's community comment found on YouTube, 
Martin Wood says, Tesla are crushing it. Great time to be a shareholder. Yeah, you're right, Martin. The share price has slowly crawled back after a recent low of $628 back in May. I'm always curious to see the share price change with the tides of public opinion. Some news breaks that I'm certain will inject the price, but no one seems to care. On the other hand, small things seem to happen, and then there is a run for the trading platforms. You can likely tell that my understanding of the stock market is not a personal strength of mine. To me, the stock market really seems like a middle school bathroom gossip session. Let me know in the comment section if my summary is incorrect, and I will gladly revise my statement. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.